Here are the four best core exercises that beginners can do from home. Hey, it's Coach Tyler from warriormade.com, coming to you from right here in my living room. And right now, I'm gonna give you a free follow along workout that you can use anytime you wanna target your core, work that excess fat off your midsection, and slim up your waist. I'll give you different levels of each exercise so anyone can do them no matter how fit you currently are, even if you're injured or have physical limitations. This workout is a great starting point if you're looking to make a body transformation. In fact, we use similar workouts just like this with thousands of our members to achieve incredible results. And stay with me to the end of this video because I wanna give you an awesome freebie. It's a tool that we use to help our members determine their unique core type, which gives you the exact exercises that you should use and the ones to avoid if you want the best results possible for your individual body. As always, you should consult with your personal care provider before you take on any new exercise program or routine. Now, core exercises are the foundation of your entire body. Every movement you make stems from your core. In order to slim down your waistline and get toned or even six pack abs, you need to be following the right exercises in a progressive order to properly activate your core and kickstart your weight loss goals. So let's jump into the workout I have for you today. Okay, so here's how this is gonna work. We're gonna do four beginner core exercises. I'm gonna describe each core exercise first, all the details that you need to know to do it with perfect form so you don't hurt yourself. Then from there, you can do the exercise for 30 seconds along with me. Then I'll go to the next exercise and repeat the process. And overall, we're gonna do those four exercises. You can have about two minutes of actual core work. And afterwards, you'll see that you can get a great core workout in just two minutes. So let's get started with the first exercise, the reverse crunch. Okay, to do the reverse crunch with perfect form, follow along to these steps, and then we'll go ahead and do the full routine. So start out on your back. The biggest thing that you wanna do is you wanna press your lower back into the ground. So the most common thing that people do with reverse crunch is as they bring their legs down, their lower back lifts off the ground like this and creates some space. And what that's doing is putting pressure on your spine instead of on your abdominal muscles. So the first thing you have to focus on is pressing your lower back into the ground and don't let it lift the entire time. From there, make a diamond with your hands, just like this, and put it underneath your tailbone, just like that. Press that lower back into the ground. Think about being tall to the top of your head. Now inhale as you drop your heels towards the ground. Exhale as you bring your knees back up towards your chest. So, and really just focus on lower back into the ground, tall to the top of your head, and your breathing. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and do these reverse crunches for 30 full seconds while maintaining perfect form. All right, let's get ready in three, two, one, and go. Make sure to keep your lower back pressing to the ground the entire time. Remember to squeeze your legs together the entire time. Remember to inhale as you go down and exhale as you go up. Three, two, one, and rest. All right, great job on the reverse crunch. You should probably already feel your abdominal muscles working a little bit, but we're gonna go to the next exercise, which is called the kneeling plank. I'll show you a few key things to think about to make sure you're doing this with perfect form, and then just like with the reverse crunch, we're gonna hold it for 30 seconds to really work your core, okay? So to start out with, come into a kneeling position. And then you're gonna bring your elbows to the ground and you're gonna press your elbows into the floor. Now, the most important part is the position between your knees, hips, and shoulders. So most people plank and they stick their butt up in the air like this. But what I want you to do is to squeeze your glutes, squeeze your butt muscles as tight as you can. And when you do that, you're gonna bring your body into alignment from your knees 
through your hips and all the way through your shoulders, okay? So squeeze those glutes. Don't let those glutes go the entire time. Then just like the reverse crunch, tuck your chin and think about pressing tall to the top of your head. Now the last thing you're gonna to wanna to think about with the kneeling plank is instead of pushing up like this with your arms, you're gonna to wanna to think about dragging your elbows towards your hips. When you create that little bit of pressure, you're not actually gonna move, but when you create that little bit of pressure like that, you're gonna feel your core muscles work twice as hard. It's gonna be way better for your core. So thinking of those things, squeezing the glutes, tall to the top of your head, and dragging your elbows back towards your knees. Let's get ready to hold that kneeling plank in three, two, one, and go. Hold and remember to breathe. Press your forearms into the ground and drag your elbows back towards your belly button to make your abs fire harder. Keep it up, let's go. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. All right, great job on the kneeling plank. We've got two exercises down and we've got two to go. So the next one is called the mountain climber and it's probably the most difficult exercise I'm gonna show you today. So make sure you take it very slow. And if need be, we're gonna show you a different variation that you can do using a chair or the back of a couch to make it even easier for you. But I'll describe it right now and how to do it with perfect form. So for the mountain climber, you're gonna come into the same position as you did for the plank, only you're gonna have your hands flat on the ground, and this time you're gonna lift up on your toes into a full push-up position. From here, press your hands to the ground, think tall to the top of your head, and one by one, you're gonna bring your knee up and back, and your knee up and back. Start slow and use small range of motion at first, and then as you get better at this, you can move even faster to the point where you're almost running in place. Okay, so think about those cues as you do the mountain climber. And again, take it easy. Don't push yourself too much. Move slow with this exercise. Let's get ready for 30 seconds of the mountain climber in three, two, one, and go. If this is too hard, try this instead. Make sure all the points of your hand are in contact with the ground and grip the ground with your fingers. Turn your elbow pits forward to really activate your shoulders. Three, two, one, and rest. All right, great job on the mountain climber. That one was probably pretty tough and we only have one exercise left. So you only got 30 seconds left. So stick with me because I really want you to feel that burn in your core from these four exercises. Now the last one is called the kneeling inchworm. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do the kneeling inchworm with perfect form and then we're gonna do this final exercise for 30 seconds. You're almost there, okay? So come into the same position as you had for the mountain climber, only this time you're gonna be down on your knees. Now bring your hands closer to your knees Squeeze your glutes just like we did with the plank, as tight as you can, and it's gonna put you in this round posture. That's okay right now because it's gonna keep your core tight and in the right place. Now from there, keep your elbows as locked as you can keep them and walk your body out as far as you can like this. So you're gonna walk your arms out as far as you can, keep those glutes tight, keep those glutes tight, and when you get out to a certain point, you're gonna feel your core really start to work. It doesn't matter how far you go, go as far as you can while squeezing your glutes, and then press up, one arm at a time, trying to keep those elbows as straight as possible. So really using your shoulder blades to move, not your elbows to move, okay? So that's all you gotta think about when doing the kneeling inchworm. Let's get started. Last set, 30 seconds. Three, two, one, and go. If this is too hard, try this instead. Try and see if you can go a little bit further on every single rep. Keep it up, you're almost done. Three, two, one, and rest. All right, great job. And thank you so much for following along and committing to the workout. Now, I have the awesome freebie for you as promised, the core type quiz. So, just Click the first link down in the comments below. 
I'm gonna pin it there for you. Once you click that link, I wanna give you free access to a special core type quiz that we created. And if you're new here, remember to subscribe and click the bell to get notifications for all our latest videos. And let me know down in the comments what exercise you felt activated your core the most. Take care, and I'll see you next time.